Associated to obedience. When some people disobey instructions, it is when they find themselves at may. What does he feel? Romans chapter 10. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 10. Are you there? Romans chapter 10. If you are there, say Amen. Amen. Mtumoja peke yake ndiye amefika pale. Romans 10 verse 14. Romans 10 verse 14. The Bible says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. The instruction that comes with this verse is in verse 13 up there. The Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is a, a demand of God. That is a direction of God. And the question comes in verse 14. How shall they align themselves to that command if they do not hear a preacher? Hallelujah. Amen. That means that for us to obey, obedience comes after hearing. When you hear something is when you can obey it. Bwana as if you it. Amen. You cannot obey God if you have not heard his voice. You cannot obey an authority, if the authority has not spoken or communicated what needs to be obeyed. Bwana Asifiyot. So, we can get a point there. For you to be obedient, you must learn to listen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because for those people to obey that word of God, they must hear a preacher. What is hearing? Listening to. You have to listen to that preacher. You have to listen to that voice. It is when you can decide now let me obey or let me defy. It is only after listening that we can find ourselves in the path of obedience. Bwana Asifiwe. Amen. Are we somewhere? Yes. First Samuel. The book of First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter 13, it is a story that most of us can recite of her, but uh, it carries some weight about obedience. First Samuel, chapter 13. The coverage is from verse 5 to 14, but I shall not read all of that because of time. Verse 5 says, 1 Samuel 13:5. Then the Philistines gathered together, sorry, gathered together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. 
And they came up and encamped in Michmash to the east of Beth Aven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were distressed, then the people <clears throat> hid in caves, in thickets, in rocks, in holes, and in pits. I'll jump to verse 8. This is now Saul. Then he waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. This is Saul. People were scattered from him. In verse 9 he says, So Saul said, Bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Verse 10, now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash, then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. 13. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now, the Lord would have established your kingdom Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Hallelujah. Amen. Saul entered in trouble the moment he heard the instructions of Saul the prophet. That wait, I will come for seven days. If he will not have had that command from the prophet, he will be safe. Because <coughs> even before God, I did not hear it. That is why I have offered this burnt offering. But because he had it, he was already hooked. And when he chose to defy or to disobey that command, that is when the judgment of God came upon him. One as he feared. Amen. Our pastor can come here and speak. A minister of God can come here and speak. It is upon you either to obey or to disobey. But the point starts where you hear. After you hear the voice of God, after you hear an instruction, if it is apparent, if it is your boss at work, that gives you an instruction. When you decide to defy the problem, becomes seen to you. Why? You had. You had it being spoken. But now you have defied it. One as you feel. Amen. I can give a, a testimony of something that happens to me. And I thank God because he is faithful. I remember about a week or so ago, a man of God stood here and said that in this church we are so blessed to a point that before a calamity comes, God must speak to you. Is it true? It is, yeah? And uh, on several occasions, I have always fallen in repercussions that I would have avoided if I, I would have heard the voice of God. I can give an example like uh, the past week on Monday, in the morning, I left to go to work. But after a few meters, <coughs> I was having my car. It's outside there. <laughs> what does it feel? <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> it is a car. If you don't have spiritual eyes, you cannot see it. <laughs> what does it feel? <laughs> Only those people who have spiritual eyes can see that it is a four-wheel vehicle. <laughs> what does it feel? So I took my car and left. And uh, after leaving, uh, just a few meters from the house. I went and went and went about a kilometer or so. Then the bike stole. 
accelerator cable of, 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 of the bike was torn. So what is happening? And at that point, I remember the past week, a voice just spoke to me and said that you need to check your accelerator cable. But I disobeyed it. <laughs> so after that incident, it is when I realized, okay, maybe God was speaking to me that I should take a step. And I knew that if I would have taken that step earlier, Yoshida in the end I go to work late. <laughs> and you just know what happens. So in it's something that I would have avoided. Many a times we are given instructions and uh, we may defy it knowingly or unknowingly, especially the instructions of God. You know, our pastor has always spoken here saying that God can speak, that he, but he doesn't give details. God may speak as if there is nothing happening. It may be in your dream. A man of God may come and speak just anything with a plain language that you can easily defy. But when the repercussion will come, it is when you will realize that indeed God was in that voice. <laughs> One day I was coming to church in the morning and uh, I was late. So as I was late, on the bike. So I was speeding. Then I was speeding on the road. Daddy, daddy, daddy. I was like annoyed. What is happening? Then I had a voice again. Daddy. Then I stopped. What is happening? Josh is saying that you should stop speeding. And I chose and said, And yet I'm late in the church early. But then I realized again and said, No. How come this boy is speaking like this? There could be something that I'm not seeing, but maybe there could be a voice of God in him. So I thought to myself, I will go slowly. <laughs> what does he feel? That feeling just came to my heart. Like, there could be a voice of God in this child. He has never spoken to me in any such way. Hallelujah. Amen. So, it is an advice to us. Whenever we hear an instruction, it may be meaningful or meaningless at that point when we hear it. But if we disobey it, it may land us into problems. If we defy an instruction, it means that we are unwilling to change. Because when an instruction comes, when a direction comes, it comes because there, there is a possibility that you can mess or you can get out of the right way. So God releases that instruction. Your leader or the person who is above you will give you that instruction to keep you on track. Otherwise, we can find ourselves going out of the track. And the problem of going out of the track, there will be repercussions. Saul found himself in repercussions that were irreversible. There are some repercussions that may come into our lives and be a permanent scar, maybe in our ministries, in our families, or in our plans, that would have been avoided only if we would have had the voice that warned us. Hallelujah. Amen. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 30. I, I'm about to, to conclude. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verse 19, this speaks about our choices. When we hear the voice, when we hear the command, what choice do you make? Do you decide to obey it? Do you decide not to obey it? We have a, a, a self-will that God has given all of us. And God can never interfere with your will, whether to obey or to disobey. But he gives instruction. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth as, witness, as witnesses today against you 
that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may be well in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Hallelujah. That you may obey his voice. God has given you the power to choose. He gives a command. Follow this direction. He gives a command that you should pray. He gives a command that you should fast. But God will not follow you to your house and force you to fast, and force you to pray, and force you to read his word. It is only an instruction. Do this. But God speaks to you again. It is better you do this because there, there are good repercussions or there are good results after you do it. But the opposite of it is also true. So obedience is upon me and you. We either choose to obey or to disobey. But when we obey, we are on the safer side because we will reap of the promises of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. When you read the book of Acts, chapter 5, from verse 25, going on there, when the apostles were arrested, they were brought to the council and they were being asked and warned, don't preach again in this name of Jesus. But they were bold enough to oppose that instruction. Why? They asked them, you judge yourself whether it is right for us to obey God or for us to obey you who are men. Hallelujah. Amen. That is now obedience to a higher level. Yes, it is right to obey. But when it comes to a weighing scale, God is on this side, man is on this side. Things of, that come from above are on one side, things that are earthly are on one side. Which side of the scale will you obey? All require your, your obedience. The left side and the right side all require your obedience. But what level will you obey? We have to consider God's instruction first. Hallelujah. Amen. They were instructed to go and preach. But these people are telling them, don't preach in that name. But they chose boldly. We will have to follow the voice of God. So they kept on preaching. And see that the results of that, that is why we are here today sharing the word of God. If they would have had the counsel at that time, you in Jili, in the Zili Wauko, na ingeisha kakuzi. Hallelujah. Amen. So ask yourself, are you ready to obey the voice of God in your life? Set yourself first to be somebody who listens. When you want to come to that level of obedience, Learn to listen before you speak. James says that, let every man be quick to hear. Be quick to do what? To hear. When you are quick to hear, you'll, you'll be quick to hear that word of God. You'll be quick to hear that instruction. Then before you speak or before you act, you'll have digested it in yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people want to be obedient to God? If you want to be obedient to God, we shall just stand and uh, we shall just make a prayer. David uh, got this revelation. So when you read the book of Psalm, he erred many times. He disobeyed God many times. He's a man who walked with God, a man after God's heart, a man who understood the statutes of God. But most of the time, Alpana Jibata is disobedient. Most of the times, al is disobedient. And when you read his Psalms in 139, he was saying that, lead me to the way of everlasting. Look into my heart. If there is anything that is causing me to walk away from you, you take it away. So there will be things that may be hindering your obedience to God. There will be things that are would wait in you. In the morning, you are told that we should lay aside those things. Hallelujah. These are the things that can cause you not to obey God Almighty. We need to have that power, the boldness that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had at that time when they were told, you have to obey us, not to worship your God. 
but they stood boldly and said, no, we cannot obey you, we have to obey God. When you come to that point, it's when it pushes God now to act on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. Just rise up on your feet and go before God. Ask God to give you a heart that is ready to listen to Him and a heart that is ready to obey Him. His word says that He will give you a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh is a heart that is easy, the heart that is submissive unto God. Go before God in your heart. Ask Him for that heart of flesh. Ask Him that uh, He gives you that power to obey His voice in Jesus' name. Father, you are great this evening. Lord, we bless you for your word. We magnify your name because of the God who speaks. And my Father, I pray today in Jesus' name, even as you have taken, O oh Lord, an obligation of speaking unto us, giving us direction, leading us from my Father, even to the right path. I pray in Jesus' name. May you open my ears so that I may be quick to hear your word. May I be quick to hear your instructions. May I be quick, oh my Father, to hear your statutes and to hear your directions. In Jesus' mighty name, open my eyes, open my understanding, Lord. Show me wonderful things in your word. Show me wonderful things in your law, oh my Father, so that I may be aware of them, so that I may hear them. And may you give me a heart of obedience. My God, my Savior, look into my heart. If there be anything that limits Oh, my Father, my response to your word, yes, in obedience, I pray today in Jesus' name, may you blot it away, may you wash it away, my Father, and sanctify me, purify me, give me a new heart of flesh, a heart that will be submissive in your presence, a heart that shall be ready to receive your word and even obey it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all the glory and honor I shall give unto you. I pray to all my Father as your people are praying in your presence today. May you give them hearts of obedience. May you give them hearts that are, are submissive even before you and even before your voice so that you may lift us, O Lord, even in our humility to obey your word, in our humility to hear your status, in our humility, O my Father, to respect your commands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be lifted high, Jehovah. Be magnified Oh my Father in this ministry. I pray even for the leadership of this ministry. May every leader, oh my Father, that you have chosen, give them a submissive heart. Give them a heart of obedience, even to a vision bearer, and at most even unto you, my Father, so that we may walk in one accord. We may walk in unity. We may walk in obedience to, to our leader, oh my Father, even as to Christ, so that this ministry may prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all glory and honor we shall give unto you. Be lifted high, my Father. Be glorified this evening because you are faithful and you are mighty. We bless you, Jehovah, for this part. We thank you because it has taken your grace. From morning you've been with us. From morning you've spoken unto us. We honor you and we know that it has taken your grace. It has taken your power. It has taken your mercy. Be lifted high, my Father, forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As your people are parting, O oh Lord, as they head to their houses, May your angels encamp around them. Yes. May the blood of Jesus Christ cover them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every schemes of the enemy, every plans of the enemy, my Father, even to take away, to steal the words that they have heard from you, the word of God from morning, oh my Father, that they have heard. May that word stick in their hearts to teach them in righteousness and obedience unto you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray.